is life insurance a good investment? My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. By the end of this video, folks, you are going to know how millionaires use life insurance to maximize their capital. But the catch is we are not investing in life insurance. Life insurance should never be an investment. So we hope that you get that by the end of this video. Yeah, life insurance is only the tool to do investing. Because let's think about it. If a multimillionaire is looking at a life insurance, uh, whole life insurance policy, and, they say, <laughs> and they say, I can get a 4% interest, that's not really a good investment. That's not how you become a millionaire. That's not how you become a millionaire on yeah, 4%. Exactly. Well, what you can do is you can leverage the money that you are earning 4% on, and you can then go and use it to invest in something that you're earning a, earning a higher interest rate. Yeah, exactly. So th we have four points that we want to share with you today. And the thing that we want to continue to harp on, which we do all the time on the Wealth Nation channel, is to get you to understand how to maximize your efforts with whole life insurance. We want you to look at this product with different lenses, right? Because typically we're taught to look at life insurance for just the death benefit capabilities that it can provide to us. But there's other things that are available inside life insurance policies that you can leverage just as long as you educate yourself. And that means looking at it from the opposite end. Yes, exactly. Instead of looking at the death benefit, look at your premium that you use to get to that death benefit. Mm -hmm. So the point, the very first point that I want to talk to you about is liquidity. What Darius was kind of uh, alluding to is being able to put your money in an asset that you have access to capital. Because the main thing about being an investor and having the ability to invest is to have assets that can be liquid. You're going to have diverse assets in different ways, but a lot of times we are able to capitalize on investment opportunities because of the cash or the liquidity that we have available. And you can do that inside a whole life insurance policy. You fund a whole life insurance policy, meaning you pay the premium and there's going to be something called cash value that is available to you, meaning cash that is available inside your policy because you are the owner of the policy. You can utilize the cash and the growth of it to your discretion. Yeah. Now here's the secret sauce when it comes to it. Most people, when they look at a whole life insurance policy, they know that you can uh, take money from it, but they think of it as, as a, a withdrawal. withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And when you withdraw money from your life insurance policy that portion of it is reduce it, it reduces the uh your death benefit because your cash value is basically a prepayment of death benefit mm -hmm. you're basically going to the bank and going to the ATM machine and taking, and taking cash. it out yeah. yeah and and when you look at what Darius is saying reducing is when you look at the amount that was in your your savings it's no account, longer there because you withdrew it <laughs> you took it out what exactly. we're what we're talking about is what multimillionaires do is they leverage it. What they do is they borrow money from the whole life insurance company and they use their policy basically as leverage because what that allows them to do is they continue to earn interest as if they haven't borrowed any money. Mm -hmm. That's key. Because they didn't withdraw the funds. When you withdraw the funds, you no longer are earning interest on the entire amount because now the amount is different. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you leverage it, meaning you go, hey, life insurance company, I'd like to get a loan. I have $50,000 in the bank or I have $10,000 in my cash value available. I want to leverage my death benefit. You know that I'm good for 500,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my death benefit. <laughs> I think I can pay you the, the 10,000 or the 50,000, whatever it is. You're going to say, Hey, I want to take a loan because I'm using my death benefit basically as collateral. So if something were to happen to me, you're going to deduct the amount of money that I have outstanding to you from my death benefit. Mm -hmm. What does that all mean? Long story short is you're using your death benefit now so that you don't have to die in order to use it. Right. Does that make sense? That, that That's really what all a loan is, is, is a loan in insurance terms is basically you're using your, your death benefit now so that you can utilize it to your discretion again. Now, the second perk to it is basically the, the safety in doing so. There's no penalty for borrowing your money. There's no penalty for paying it back early. You can pretty much create your payment schedule, mm -hmm. which uh, for very successful people, having flexibility is is uh worth a thousand dollars in itself yeah and i think the thing to to note when we talk about safety whenever you're putting your money anywhere and and we we were just talking about storage facility whenever you put your money somewhere you want to make sure that there's guarantees you want to make sure that if things happen outside of your control godzilla hits new york city um, the stock market crashes the real estate market crashes you want to make sure that your your money is protected in an environment where it's not dependent on the activity of the economy in order to do something. Yeah, I would say a, a, a good way to um, compare that would be how we use our uh, retirement accounts mm -hmm. and how um, 
we can use these life insurance policies because remember we started this video saying that wealthy people can't put their money into a retirement account um, because they make too much money what's a, a couple grand to a, a multimillionaire yeah. when you max out, max it out yeah it, it's not much but you can use your whole life insurance policy the way um that you would use like a, a retirement account mm -hmm. now the contrast is when the stock market goes down your retirement account can go away regardless of what happens in our economy the uh, dividend paying whole life insurance policy will still continue to perform consistently the way it has been for the past 100 years yeah i agree and and the the point about it is protecting the principal yes right so when we think about putting our money in savings accounts or putting our money in retirement accounts our principal is not protected but if we put it inside a whole life insurance policy our principal is protected and in addition we get another perk which is that death benefits should something happen to us so when you look at financial products you really have to start understanding the ins and outs and how you can utilize them to your benefit and also recognize who's using these mm -hmm. because if middle america isn't using whole life insurance but millionaires and billionaires are and our politicians maybe we should start thinking about things a little bit differently because they's not buying term insurance you know what no. i'm saying it's just a little bit different so it's just about being awake and and looking at what people are doing because we want to if we want to emulate what successful people are doing then maybe we should start researching the things that they're getting into so safety is that second point that we're talking about we want uh, safety of principle and we want our money to be protected in the event there are events that are outside of our control and yeah, because we can ride those events out and take advantage of the opportunities that's left over after everything's uh, yeah beat up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> beat up. Now, the next thing is uh, rate of return. I want to I want to make sure we're on the same page because, again, we're still saying that life insurance is not an investment. All we're talking about when we say rate of return is where can we put our principal in an environment where we can earn a consistent rate of return? Okay, when I say consistent, because in savings accounts at the bank, it's up and down. We don't even know what it is because it's so little. And it's well, so. It, it, I, w I wouldn't say it's up and down. I'm just saying I would say that it's just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's like point zero one, then point whatever. And it, 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 it changes, right? So anytime there is going to be changes in the economy, that's going to affect our savings accounts and what happens in our retirement accounts. And not to mention when we use the funds, we no longer earn any interest on those funds. Exactly. So when we say a, a rate of return, we're talking about consistency. We're saying long term, if we just put our money over here in this bucket, can we keep <laughs> riding out a consistent a rate of return without doing anything? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we're investing or not, just the storage facility. Can can we cozy up with a little bit of interest <laughs> and know that it's going to going to continue to be paid out? The other reason why we, we really well, before before you jump to that, that's how you earn compound interest, because in order for compound interest to work, your money has to sit and you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. You can earn compound interest in your in your savings account. But as soon as you go and make a withdrawal, go to make a purchase, that money is no longer there to earn interest. So you, that that disrupts compound interest. Yeah. And when, and. And to sorry, and, and to compare like CDs, for example, back mm -hmm. in the days, uh, CDs were very popular, but CDs also have a maturity date. Mm -hmm. You're going to use that CD after so many years and then you have to cash out. So the, the point of the, the whole life insurance policy is you are earning compound interest for your entire life, hence whole life. So we don't want uh, an account that we're going to have to continue to start over. <laughs> every time we every time, disrupt compounding. Either disrupt compounding or we reach a maturity date, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So those are the th things that we need to think about. Right. Now, the point that you were going to make before I disrupt you, do you remember that? No. <laughs> okay. So, well, so, well, just I wanted to conclude the rate of return piece. Okay. It is when we talk about, oh, I'm going to earn 4% in my whole life insurance policy, for example, then we start to confuse people, I think, I think, because they go, oh, but you're earning interest. So mm -hmm. this has to be an investment. We want you to compare this to your savings account. We want you to compare this to a CD. We want you to compare this to almost like a, a Roth, you know, a, a, a Roth IRA or something. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say compare, I'm saying think of it that way as I'm, I'm putting money in this vehicle to earn a rate of return. And then I know that I'm going to take money from this and do some sort of investing with it because I'm going to earn four off top and then whatever else I'm going to do by actually investing. All right. Now, the next point that we want to make relates to taxes. Taxes is probably one of the, the biggest reasons I think people will use this, especially once they get to a certain income, because taxes allow you to to 
keep 30 percent of your income or 34 percent of your income however much money you make you are able to keep a huge chunk of your money when you start understanding the rules of taxes and i think we mentioned earlier i mentioned earlier politicians like using this this asset mm-hmm. and i think it's because of taxes mm-hmm. they understand the rules and how to um the, the different loopholes and one of the ways they can uh work with within those parameters is to use whole life insurance yeah whole life insurance you pay taxes on it in the beginning and you don't after tax dollars you pay you use it you buy your insurance policy with after tax dollars and you never pay taxes on it again no matter how much money you uh you grow in your system and that's one of the benefits one of the biggest benefits i think very successful people use whole life insurance dividend paying whole life insurance is because of that benefit one thing i found really cool that i saw on the internet was the eighth wonder of the world isn't just earning compound interest it's tax-free compound interest and if we compare that to a retirement account for example right we're using pre-tax dollars and then we're earning some sort of interest and then we have to pay taxes once it comes time for us to retire that's not tax-free in any sense. No. Right? So when we use whole life insurance, we're putting after tax dollars in, right? We've already been taxed on the funds. We're funding whole life insurance and the growth of the policy is not taxable as mm-hmm. long as you don't make your policy, which is a whole nother video where you can look <laughs> at that information there. Just don't break the rules. Okay, folks, right. as long as you don't break the rules, you can earn tax free compounding interest inside the policy for your entire life. That is the eighth wonder of the world, tax free compounding interest. And that is the game changer that millionaires understand is that as long as I continue to fund policies to earn this consistent rate of return, right? I can utilize this money and leverage it to my disposal so that I can continue to invest and make more and more money. And as these assets continue to grow, meaning our life insurance policies, as they get uh, older, as they continue to mature and earn more money, that's more and more compounding that we're doing in addition to the investing that we're doing outside of the policy. So that's where you have to start understanding the the power of leverage and how to start utilizing financial products in different ways that's going to bring more money your way without having to do a lot of legwork. Mm-hmm. Now, what I, what I really want us to focus on at this point is the fact that we talked about protecting your principal. And when it comes to whole life insurance, the, the, the one of the top things for it, top um, uh, reasons why this is a good product or good asset is because it's predictable Mm, it is predictable when we start investing in the markets or um, our retirement account it's not predictable they can give you a a spreadsheet of what they um, expect but a lot of times after a few years we realize that it's not producing the way that it, it was when we signed up for it but when it comes to our whole life insurance policy they are predictable. Yeah. They are predictable on that guarantee that this is how much money you're going to have in your account 15 years from now mm-hmm. and 15 years later. Mm hmm it's performing the way they said it would. Absolutely. Now, the whole point of this video is to introduce the concept. Matter of fact, that's guaranteed. <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> like, I can't, wait a second. <laughs> it's guaranteed. How many, how many contracts do you can you create that there's a guarantee? Please, in a comment, if you can find another contract that you can create that provides a guarantee, please let us know. We would love to research it. Yeah. Yeah. As you say that, I'm thinking about rattling everything in my head. I'm like, nothing. Not that I can think of. My savings account isn't guaranteed. My checkings account isn't guaranteed. Did you know that, by the way? Fun fact of the day. (laughs) Did you know that uh, your checkings account and savings accounts, the banks aren't guaranteed to to pay you that? I mean, granted, okay, we're we're talking about the insurance. What is it? FDIC? FDIC up to 250. I think it's 200 now. It's it's, it's 200 now. But the, the thing is, is you have to think about these things. It's it's very important for you to look at the bank from a different perspective than just being able to, to put money in it. Mm-hmm. So, again, fun fact of the day. Things to think about. Yeah. And in most financial information, you don't get it from uh, TV. And no. I think that's where a lot of people get their information, which is why it's so hard for um, collectively for us to wrap our minds around what other successful people are doing. Mm-hmm. Successful people, what they do is they go in rooms and they has, have these conversations, they have these meetings, and they talk about different ways in which they have become successful. But then when you go and you try to do your research, you you find that it's, it's very generalized. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the point that we want to make is 
the point that I want to make is you have to take a look in, in at yourself and understand what your experience uh, will allow you to do. Mm-hmm. What type of experiences have you had up until this point? Because the experiences that you had up until this point financially is the reason why you're where you are right now. Yeah. And and the other thing, too, uh, to, to jump on that is we we want you to understand the importance of positive leverage. And that's really this whole video. This whole video is just talking about positive leverage, being able to get involved in an asset with little capital, Mm -hmm. right? Because if we pay, for example, one of our first policies was $10,000. If if we pay $10,000 for a policy and have access to 500 plus thousand dollars in death benefit, that's winning (laughs) in my book. And that's what I'm talking about is positive leverage. Especially for you if I kick the bucket. We won't talk about that, babe. Um, and that's just one of them. So, and, <laughs> so, so the thought is, when, when we think about this whole situation is positive leverage, that there's little money down to get access to a lot of money. And and But the, the other thing, too, is I don't want that to be misleading, because I'm not saying that if you put $10,000 into a premium, you're going to have access to 500000 That's not how it works. But that's why we have so many other videos on YouTube that you can continue to watch and, and understand those things. But the point is being able to only pay $10,000 thousand dollars per year and have access to so much more money to protect your family Mm -hmm. so if you want to continue to learn the nuances of what we talk about with using max funded whole life insurance and definitely click on our next video and remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will